Hi, Blaustein students. Cities today, like New Brunswick, are often stigmatized for being both expensive and centers of massive wealth inequalities. Minimum parking requirements, traffic impact analyses, and the never-ending mission to solve parking problems are the reasons why cities have ridiculous construction costs and price out residents, businesses, and developers alike. It's over for the little guy. Not only that, but parking takes up so much space that it can make a city unwalkable and therefore unlivable. Today, we will learn what these policies are and the impact it leaves on urban communities. As the popularity of cars rose, cities were afraid new developments would cause uncontrollable traffic. To find out how traffic would be affected by new developments, a traffic impact analysis is conducted. This analysis measures congestion on roadways before and after the development is constructed. The Great Minds at the Institute of Traffic Engineers, or the ITE, came together to create Trip Generation Manual. It details the car trips that would be created for different types of developments. These numbers are then compiled to measure the delay at intersections for cars surrounding the development, called the Level of Service, or LOS. If the intersection received an A, then great, that intersection has no traffic. If the intersection receives an F, then, oh no, there will be a lot of traffic. Don't worry, I've got an ace up my sleeve. Developers care a lot about the Traffic Impact Analysis, or TIA, because then they have to foot the bill for any infrastructure improvements needed to reduce congestion they cause. And therein lies the problem with TIA, and as well as LOS. In cities where the street network is dense and densely populated, then of course the LOS surrounding a new development would be an F. Developers are more likely to build somewhere else far from a city, so fewer improvements are needed. Development and wealth are now concentrated in suburban fringe, making people need to drive more and move out of the city. Another strategy used to mitigate costs is to shrink the scope of projects in cities, which is also bad because then there is less development happening within cities. The TIA needs to be changed if we expect cities to grow and become better. There have been several changes to fix the TIA. California recently changed the LOS standard to VMT system, or vehicle miles traveled. Developers now need to worry about reducing the number of miles a vehicle needs to travel to the development. If the development is predicted to have a low VMT, then developers save money and the development and investment can go back into cities. VMT system is an innovative fix that increases transit usage and denser development. Great, if all cities changed LOS to VMT, then cities will no longer be held back by pro-suburban policies. Well, actually, there still is one major hurdle in the way, and that's minimum parking requirements. Minimum parking requirements were designed to solve spillover parking and a lack of parking for drivers. City officials were afraid that the demand for parking will clog up streets and cars would be littered everywhere. The ITE quickly came together to create parking generation rates. These rates determine the number of parking spaces required for each building. The ITE conducts various surveys across the country and observes the parking conditions and average occupancy rates on busy days. Sounds very scientific and smart, right? The problem with these parking generation rates is these surveys the very smart ITE conducted are biased and completely unrealistic expectations for parking. Surveys are conducted on big box suburban retail stores with free parking on big sales days like Black Friday and Christmas. The same rates are then superimposed onto dense cities where people can arrive by train, bus, or by walking. Anyone can submit a parking survey, so most of the data is inaccurate and poorly done. Research has found that half of the occupancy studies are based on four or fewer actual observations, and one in five are based on a single location. The parking generation rate as a concept to measure parking is also completely backwards. The ITE has determined that occupancy is the demand for that store. However, forgetting that parking prices are zero and therefore parking demand will always be high. The final and fundamental problem with parking is that there is an expectation of a clear correlation between parking occupancy and store size. But the reality is that data is random and based upon other variables. Cities across the country took these rates to heart. Large plots of dense urban land were carved out to make way for free parking for drivers. Yay, we did it. We solved traffic and parking forever. Wait, what? We created more problems? Why are prices becoming more expensive? That's right. Planners have only managed to reduce the costs associated with owning a car. However, what happens is that the cost of building parking raises the prices of everything else.
Let's say if a business owner were to invest and build their store in the city, they would have to construct parking because of minimum parking requirements. According to Donald Shoup, an economics and planning professor at UCLA, the average above ground parking garage costs $24,000 per spot and below parking garages cost $34,000 per spot to construct. Maybe with all the money for parking, we can build more housing, a community garden, or maybe use that money to reduce rents so everyone can live affordably. Shoup also argues the construction of a parking space costs more than the net worth of most Americans. American households have negative net worth because of the costs associated with owning a car. Low-income people are forced to own a car to use that space by attempting to provide free parking. The cost of parking increases construction costs for the developers and the prices for the entire community. Parking is so expensive that the cost of parking is bundled with the cost of housing units for tenants and buyers, and therefore it increases housing prices. Store owners and businesses must also raise prices to provide and maintain parking. Minimum parking requirements sound like a really bad idea made by a bunch of engineers back in the 50s that has impacted the lives of everyone. What should we do then? Get rid of parking requirements? Yes. Cities and planners have lost faith in minimum parking requirements and are looking into better solutions to solve parking and that can better help a community. So what have we learned? The luxury of having free parking is false. Parking is not free and never was free. Why should our community subsidize something that does not benefit everyone and is so incredibly expensive? Parking reform is not only about changing how we interact with our built environment, but it's also a chance for communities to take back what was stolen from pro-suburban policies. By attempting to provide free parking and reduce congestion through the TIA, planners have only created one of the most severe forms of economic injustice. Parking reform needs to happen now.